are these people? Just switch over here. So we're not just doing this on one screen. Hey, hi, everybody. Oh, goodness. Reese's face is covered with that QR code. That's not cool. Let's fix that. All right. Now we're good. Um, yeah, it's censorship. What a, what a country. What a topic. Like, and this is all happening, again, with our money. And they're worried about misinformation. You know, the call's coming from inside the house, guys. It's coming from the government. It's coming from the intelligence agencies that are funding the misinformation apparatus that masks what the intelligence agencies are doing. And it's being done and funded by cutouts like InQtel. And we're going to talk about InQtel in a couple of minutes. All right. Um, there is one more censorship files article. And it also involves the EIP, where they said that they will not yeah. be intimidated from continuing their mission in 2024. And this is, again, a Matt Taibbi article, paid Racket News. Uh, this was at Stanford University. Um, so support independent media by by all means. Support Racket. Support INN. We're user funded. Now, Matt says, first, this is not the story I referenced about plans for souped up AI themed versions of the Stanford run DHS and DOS partnered election integrity partnership heading into the 24 election. That's still to come and part of a separate series in collaboration with public. The following documents do, however, show that participants in the election integrity partnership plan to continue and expand their program into 2024 and beyond. Wait, what? Yeah. In this note from September 2022, former Facebook executive and Stanford Internet Observatory head Alex Stamos writes a note of encouragement to the other core members of the EIP, despite some recent attention from right-wing media, he's literally talking about Taibi, the EIP will not be intimidated from continuing our mission in 2022 and 2024. Hmm, what does he mean? Again, this is from public records from Kate Starbird's email because it's an EDU that at a government-funded research um, thing. Same thing with Stanford Internet Observatory. Right. Earlier that same year, EIP participants received a note from Maria Bianchi Buck of the Pew-funded Election Trust Initiative asking about plans for the upcoming year. Would EIP be up and running again? How much was it receiving from the Newmark Foundation and the National Science Foundation? And are you still pursuing funding from the DHS and other federal sources? Regarding the latter, were there reasons such that there, that funding might be undesirable? Huh. That's a, that's a weird kind of email from an election trust initiative person. I guess she's just kind of find it, follow up and see how much company she's going to have in the disinformation space for the upcoming elections. But Starbird, who sat right, Starbird, who sat on a DHS advisory committee, replied that, quote, outside of the National Science Foundation, which is a primary funding agency for research in my field of human computer interaction and has funded my research since I was a University of Colorado grad student. My team has not applied for federal funding for our rapid response work. I made it clear to my collaborators and potential funders that my UW team would not request nor accept funding from DHS or other federal agencies that do this work or to do this work. Now, she says that, but her agency, but they'll certainly accept it from a third party that's paid off by them. The DHS had a significant role in the election integrity partnership that UW worked on as a core partner. Twitter files describe executives saying, quote, DHS want to establish a centralized portal for reporting disinformation, 
unquote, while the White House Weaponization Committee found an email from an Atlantic Council participant noting, oh my goodness, we just set up an election integrity partnership at the behest of DHS slash CISA. That's, that's bad. Um, one of the main EIP partners, the Center for Internet Security, was also significantly funded by the DHS. So again, she's saying here, we would not request or accept funding from DHS, but they're getting stuff from CISA, or from CIS, not CISA, but CIS, which is funded by the DHS. Hmm. Starbird, meanwhile, meanwhile, wrote to DeResta at, Star at Stanford, Renee DeResta, who we don't like, and her UW team about submitting a proposal to the National Science Foundation about hoping to implement and evaluate, like we saw earlier, four to five additional EIP-like collaborations for Election 22, Election 24, and other emergent crisis slash breaking events, like the next pandemic, quote-unquote, that they keep predicting. Safe and effective, safe and effective. My heart swells with pride. The email even comes with a helpful timeline showing plans for a full-blown EIP-style response to both election 2024 and a not-yet-defined emergent crisis event that would apparently occur in year three of their plan. Um, that would be in last year into this year. So first half of last year, the oh, last half of last year, first half of this year, potentially. Have we had an emergent crisis event? Well, we've had several, but I don't know if there are any that necessarily um, would warrant a full-blown election integrity partnership style response and, you know, um, agency to be set up and study and everything else. But she says that her project was designed to produce innovative methods and evaluate collaborative frameworks for rapid response to harmful falsehoods around elections and crisis events. The work is ongoing. We've applied our frameworks to surfacing and helping to resolve rumors around the 2022 U.S. election. What do you mean? Limited to rumors about election processes and results and to responding to rumors about a small number of crisis events. I don't like what they're talking about when it comes to this crisis events stuff, because that's like, as news breaks, something like Rafa massacre, like the flower massacre is unfolding. They're talking about controlling the narrative. That's a crisis event as far as they're concerned. These communications are important because they show the key participants in the largest 2020 election content monitoring program like Starbird, who told 60 Minutes that more information is spread by people that were supporters of Donald Trump or conservatives, at least at one time planned to rerun similar programs in 2022 and 2024. And again, for her full set of UW emails, please visit the FOIA library linked in the paid post. So Kate Starbird is not a friend of, I don't know who, of, of people who are online that are trying to question the election integrity process, potentially. I mean, how do you feel about all this, man? Seems par for the course, honestly. You know, we talk, we talk about Hamilton 69 a ton. We talk about, uh, you know, Jankowitz and all this stuff. I mean, I'm not surprised all of it's connected to, you know, think tanks that decided this might not be a good idea, but it's what our profit voters want. So, you know. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. What are what, what yeah. are the overlords and it's Craziness. really what the na the national security overlords I think more even than the profit people want because that that really drives and yeah. controls all of it. Um, you see this slide up here. These are our supporters. We really appreciate all of them. If you are able, really appreciate you dropping us a couple of bucks. Also, again, support Racket News. These are paid, are paid subscriber articles and 
guess what? We pay for that subscription from the money that you support us with as well. So, huh, um, Patreon, Substack, Rumble, Cash App, best way to do it. And of course, down in the corner, you've got that QR code that can go to Kofi and that will help fund Jesse Jet's new PC. We've reached our first $1,000 goal. Really appreciate everybody stepping up to help us do that. 